I would, I would first like to ask how many of you, those who have scored actually 150 plus in both the papers including, just write yes or no if you have scored 150 plus in the paper, which including paper 1 and paper 2. Yes. Yes, I'm able to get some responses. Okay, now, uh, as you know, uh, before going further into the discussion, I would like you to focus on some of the statistics that I have on, I have for you, uh, just to have a view of the numbers that you get or uh, numbers that the toppers get or the numbers that the people who get those who qualify. Now, coming to overall five papers, one to five paper overall, Okay, mark 1 to 5. The median score in paper 1 has remained around 30 marks. Okay, and in paper 2, in paper 1 it has remained around 30 marks, and in paper 2 it has remained around 70 marks. Okay, so 30 marks in paper 1, 70 marks in paper 2. On the other hand, if we see the toppers list, the toppers median marks in paper 1 has remained close to 50 and in paper 2 it has remained close to 130 okay so my idea overall is if you are an average student in paper 1 okay then you are only 20 marks away from a topper average topper in paper 1 Okay, this is the median marks of the toppers. So, when you are an average in paper 1, you are 20 marks away from an average among the toppers. Okay. On the other hand, if you are an average in paper 2, you are around 60 marks away from the average in the toppers list. Around 60 marks. And only 20 marks in only 20 marks in paper 1. So, you know, what I want to focus here is, it will be very difficult for you to afford the exam, to qualify, afford to qualify the exam to the next level, if you are unable to score very good in paper 2. Paper 2 you need to score well because if you are average in paper 2, it gives a big lead to the toppers. On the other hand, in paper 1, even if you are a, an average, then too there is not a very big difference with the topper. The difference, okay, in any case you have to score well in both the subjects, both the papers, but be ready for the tough nut also because, you know, before going into mains, you have to qualify prelims. And to qualify prelims, you need to focus on the areas which will help you in qualifying prelims. Because when total marks of prelims are not added, so in the end target is to just cross the level which we need. Just cross the level which we, where, where the line is. So the line is around 198 or something, 190, 80 or something for including paper 1 and paper 2. So when taking both of them, it will be very difficult for you if you are an average in paper Two, because in paper 2, you have a big difference with the toppers. In paper 1, there is comparatively lesser. So in all, right now, whatever the papers are going on, in paper 1, I would expect you to score at least 100, and 100 in at, at least 40 in paper 1, and at least 100 in paper 2. Then coming to the qualification issues, 50 in paper 1, and 110 in paper 2. So, you know, 50 and 110 is overall at least required. If so, start marks, 160 is what you should aim for in the papers that you are doing these days. And in the final exam, you will see an upward swing in at least paper 1, which will help you to achieve around 180 marks in overall papers. Okay. So, overall, Now overall I would say, you know, what 
you have to target i hope you are getting my point that in paper one if you are not able to do very well you have less chances of failure but in paper two if you are not able to do very well you have more chances of failure so that is what i want you to understand that in paper one and paper two together paper two holds uh, an edge with respect to the overall marks and the uh, weightage of marks that you will eventually balance out i hope my point is clear you know so 160 is what i require from most of you in the exams if you are unable to get 160 it means that there is a problem in your preparation i still say even if you are getting 130 140 then means you are in the shooting distance you are within the shooting range if you are around 130 40 but if you are not getting even 120 i would say that will be a very very that could be a disaster at the end that could be a disaster in the end so you know overall be focused pick your area in paper 1 in paper 2 where you can score well target at least 40 50 paper 1 in these papers because in upsc exam you will get some of the questions where you can logically get the answers isliye upsc exam mein 10 15 marks extra aa jayenge abhi 50 40 50 ka aim rakho paper 1 mein aur saath saath paper 2 mein 100 ke aas paas aane hi chahiye nahi to overall agar 140 50 50 nahi aa rahe hain to upsc exam mein 180 90 kheechna bahut mushkil hoga 130 140 and still say that these guys are trying very hard they are they just need some more good days to perform well and take them to the higher leagues but overall you know if you are not able to master 125 20 you have a problem in your preparation okay so right now we are also we are half way through the test series Six exams are over, and overall, if you see the eleven exams that you will be giving, <clears throat> out of that, six exams are over. So you know you have less time to actually measure your level and strength. Coming into the session, yes, the session is designed to optimize students' performance in civil services prelims exam. Well, as usual, some of the old lines. So analysis of the questions. I again would like to focus. See the questions where you are actually able to give the answer. See the question. Mark out those areas where you are able to actually pick out the answers very easily. Then understanding the areas where you can be comfortable. Well, understand or point out the areas where you are able to score well. Do not leave those areas in in the exam. Help you customize your own way to approach the exam. Very very important. see the paper overall pick the areas then customize yourself customize the the overall attempts according to it har exam ke baad jab aap wapas jaate ho to dekho kaun sa area jo lagatar kal galat ho raha hai wahan pe padhna padega aapko kuch area the jo lagatar pakadne padenge okay so until unless you are catching those areas it will be very very difficult for you to actually uh, get the requisite number that you need to qualify for mains and i would like to focus on one more aspect many students come after the prelims exam to ask about the mains thing so you know when that comes to mains have a have an eye on the mains also that's going to be held in november you know now we know another two three days we will see the the, the the notification from upsc the dates are changed the whole syllabus is going to be changed so well uh, two three days we can certainly wait by the next session that we go online we have the whole series ready but uh, considering the uh, news that are coming these days is that is correct that 1200 uh, gs is going to be of 1200 marks you will you will have to be you know more cautious in the gs part so paper one right now that we are going to do will overall you know It's just not a prelim preliminary exam that will test your some of the uh, uh, factual knowledge. Overall, your interpretation skills, your analysis, your information, everything is tested. I would say count this paper as not GS. Count this paper as GSAT. If you say paper two as GSAT, this paper is GSAT. General Studies Aptitude Test. 
you need general studies as the facts and then you need sensible analysis in your mind to go ahead with the answer answers will not come just by using facts facts and then a bit of analysis or a bit of sense value so g fact i would say rather call it rather than c fact and then it will certainly help you in mains also if you have a holistic preparation in prelims that is you actually understand the things you just don't बाय हार्ट द थिंग सो खाली रटने वाली चीज नहीं होनी चाहिए देन टू एड वैल्यू टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड सॉल्विंग अप्रोच टू द सिविल सर्विस प्रिलेंस एग्जाम नाउ दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दीज सेशन वन और टू क्वेश्चन मे ऑलवेज बी रॉन्ग वन और टू क्वेश्चन ऑफ योर वी मे ऑलवेज बी करेक्ट बट इन ओवरऑल अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड द सॉल्विंग अप्रोच दैट यू नीड फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन इज वेरी वेरी क्रूशल इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यू नो Uh, please focus on such aspects please you know uh, customize the exam according to you pick the area that you that you can do pick the leave the area that you are not able to do and then customize the overall syllabus going further um, uh, sorry now going further the flow of the session before that i would like to say you know i like to uh, take one more point that i have earlier taken that which areas you should actually look for okay now i would like to repeat those points some of those points again now overall gs can be divided in two areas that one area is the static part and the other area is dynamic part static and dynamic okay static and dynamic area okay in static area the areas are indian national movement polity and geography so you know these three areas are from the book static areas hai ye badalte nahi hai and these three together will comprise around 30% of the paper 30% of the paper now i hope you are getting my point out of these 30% ye 30% to consolidate karna acche se isko jaane mat dena haath se isko acche se pakde raho ncrt your dd basu or maybe Indian National Movement from Bipin Chandra, Geography from Static Books and NGRT. You know these 30% marks. Out of these 30, around 17-18 marks should be scored. Over 50-60% accuracy, accuracy के साथ ये 17-18 questions अगर आप you know this is this 30 mark mark this 30 questions 30% of the paper. So out of these 30 questions, around if 17 to 18 is Take it home. You know you can actually go well with 17-18 questions. It will give you enough cushion to handle this area. Now this area, that is dynamic area, includes economics, then economics, then environmental, science and tech. Okay, then some parts of international. and of course uh, your ecology okay so now these areas in dynamic art cannot be predicted on a bad day agar aapka din acha nahi hua to ho sakta hai ki acha exam mein nahi ho pa raha hai bahut sare question chhoot ja rahe hain bahut sare question nahi ho pa rahe hain so these dynamic areas are you know very very unpredictable to so, predictable jo part hai wo static hai static ko to apna sada bhai maan ke hi chalo and do try to do well here okay okay now one thing i would like to say is the sum of your writing question and answers in the question and answer section i would ask you to write in the chat section because that question and answer session moves on very fast and i am unable to see the questions so i saw some of the questions from ratesh in the
Yes, all of you, can you hear me? You know, I just lost connection for few seconds, I guess. Can you try once if you can hear me? Yes, and I would request you, you know, just put the you put your questions and your comments in the chat section, not in the Q and on Q and A section. I hope you are clear with the difference on the right side of your screen. There must be. So you know, put your question in the chat section. I am unable to see your questions and will not be able to reply if you put your questions in question and answer section. Okay. Get uh, uh, enough time at the end. 
because for two hours generally the sessions you know it's difficult to actually uh, cover all the hundred questions. If we want, we can jump for to straight to the questions. Yes, I have got a response. He has got a thing. Ask question number forty-four. So coming to question number forty-four. So I would like all of you to uh, give you give us the points where we can discuss the questions. Uh, send the question numbers along with that. Forty-four uh, question that would be given on around page number ninety. So consider the following statements: Higher growth in GDP and population can occur together. Per capita income always decreases with high population growth. Now you know. Uh, what I would, you know, uh, uh, the broader of your point would be that which of these events? Uh, the question is which of the following is correct? Now, coming on the practical note, if you, if we go in this question by the theoretical point of view, I would say that higher growth in GDP and population can certainly occur together. On the other hand, per capita income always decreases with high population growth. It should not be true in that case. Now. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that is with the philosophical, you know, that is with the theoretical point of view. But practically, when we see coming to the option two, per capita income always decreases with higher high population growth. Now, it is not always correct. So, second is of course hundred percent wrong. Higher growth in GDP and population can occur together. In this case, in some cases it can happen, and in most cases it cannot happen. Okay. So you know, by the statement, if we go, it should be correct. So in that case, the answer should be A. Okay. On the other hand, if we go by strict definition, yes, Vijay, uh, the uh, recording will be uploaded. Uh, will be on you. Uh, or will be uploaded on the uh, link. I will provide you the link. So, Gaurav, um, uh, I would like you to hear further. So higher growth in GDP and population can occur together. Of course, they can occur together theoretically and practically. It's not possible, but theoretically we will go, and theoretically it can happen. Okay, uh, like you know, in some of the uh, uh, some of the African countries, their population is also growth is um, tremendous, and sometimes they see a spurt in the uh, GDP growth. Then per capita income always decreases with income population growth. Now we know that it, it doesn't. You know, practically it may happen, but generally it uh, it doesn't always decrease. At times, you know, in some countries per capita income may increase with the even with the higher population growth if the higher growth is there. So the correct answer would be A. In the extreme case, some of we uh, some of us those who can think a bit generically, we can go with D. But I would give would go with answer A in this. And what uh, what the answer given in your uh, what the answer given okay you say the answer is given as B of course strike that answer out and the correct answer should be answer A yes another question. Yes, another question that you would like to ask. Question number fourteen. Yes, Anand. Yes, yes. Gora, I will come to that. So, next question from Mr. Anand Takash. Question number fourteen. Gora, are you clear with the last question? So the Ministry of Environment and Forest has recently notified a circular. It issued in 2009 and allow building activity in forest areas without the need for Gram Sabha consent. Uh, you know, uh, if you see, I would you know uh, there is a link that I would like to show. You know, I would not be able to show right now.
you know, uh, that's a pure factual question, you know, uh, 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 Akash, Anand Akash, you know, uh, that there is a link for this. If you want, you can send me a mail at um, helpy at and, you know, um, you know, uh, we'll, I'll just send you the link back. So, you know, right now I have to check the link that I have. You know, just a fact recently has been done. I hope there should not be any doubt with this. Okay, um, yes, another question. Yes, Anand, in a statement to the Ministry of Environment and Forest has recently modified the circular it issued in 2009 and allowed building activity in forest areas without the need for Gram Sabha consent. Yes, you know, there has, it's a pure fact question. That is what I am telling. It, it has actually in some cases. Okay, uh, just we hold on for a second. If I could see if I have it ready right now, I would just write the link in for, in for you. Uh, 
uh, if you see the Coriolis force, if you see the Coriolis force in the northern hemisphere this way and in the southern hemisphere this way. So in southern hemisphere it goes towards right and in northern hemisphere it goes towards <coughs> north. No, certainly it's, it's opposite is given. Certainly it's wrong. You know, for your um, for your easiness, I would say try to do this S. This is S that goes towards clockwise, and for north this. The statement is wrong, sir. Uh, just hold for a second if you want, I can check it again for you. I'll just check it again for you if you want, just hold on for a second. Okay, so if you want you can just check from the diagram that I have given you, uh, the, uh, when we move towards north, there is a clockwise drift, so this is a clockwise drift towards north and when we move towards south, there is an anti-clockwise drift, so this will be an anti-clockwise drift. So it goes towards left in, uh, in the north and it goes towards uh, right in the south, in north it has a clockwise drift and in south it has the anti-clockwise drift. There might be some confusion with it, I am 100% sure. I am 100% sure, you know, uh, in north, northern hemisphere it is a clockwise drift and in southern hemisphere it is the anti-clockwise drift. That means in north it is left and in south it is right. With the direction of motion certainly. I hope. Okay, we will just, uh, just hold on for a second. Yes, yes, I got the point. I am actually drawing the figure wrong. Yes, I got your point. I'm go I got your point. Okay, so five of you are opposing me. I just I was thinking that why five of you are opposing me. Okay, I was drawing the diagram. Okay, fine, fine. I take my point back. 100%. Yes, uh, the answer is same for me. It goes for the clockwise direction in the north and anti-clockwise in the south. Yes, the clockwise is this. Sorry, sorry. This is clockwise in the north with the direction and this is with the south the anti-clockwise is. Okay, when we go towards south, this goes for the anti-clockwise direction. Here's fine. Second answer is absolutely correct. It goes to left in southern hemisphere and right in the northern hemisphere. I'm sorry with the direction I got confused. That was you know, don't try to remember left or right. Just try to remember when we go towards north, in, ever, in whatever direction we go towards, uh, uh, it goes in the it, it goes in the clockwise direction. I hope you are getting my point. When we travel in the northern hemisphere towards north or in any direction, it in northern hemisphere the moving of object takes the uh, clockwise direction and uh, in the southern hemisphere it takes the anti-clockwise direction. I hope that's clear to you. Now, now you know, uh, now coming to the point, but you know, uh, coming to the point, that is the point. Now it says that warm currents from low latitudes tend to move to the left in the southern hemisphere. Now, due to Coriolis force, the warm current from low latitudes tend to move to the left in southern hemisphere and tend to right in the in the uh, northern hemisphere. This answer is still wrong because it is asked about warm current. Okay. Okay. This is about warm current. Now, I hope the point is clear. 
Now when the Coriolis force is, is acting with the Coriolis force, with the Coriolis force, remember the point that in the northern hemisphere you take the clockwise direction and in southern hemisphere, and in southern hemisphere it takes the uh, anti-clockwise direction. Okay, next question. Yes, you know, Coriolis force will have least effect as near the poles. Yes, Kushag. Kushag has some doubt. Come on with the doubt. Kushag, putting question number 14, we have discussed already, and I'll give you the link if you want. You can just check the link. Question, I think you have uh, joined us late. You can check the question number 14. I'll just put the link here and you can check the question number 14. Yes, another question. Yes, Samir, question number 15. You know, uh, some of you, some of your questions may be missed at times because a number of queries are coming and that is why, you know, it gets slow. I, I Sometimes if your point is not heard, please write it many times, you know, because <coughs> Uh, which of the following statements is or are related with the horizontal distribution of salinity of oceans? Yet another question from geography area. Salinity changes with depth, but the way it changes depends upon the location of the sea. The North Sea, in spite of its location in higher altitudes, latitudes, records higher salinity due to more saline water by the North Atlantic drift. And third statement is salinity at depth is very much fixed, but there is because there is no way that water is lost or the salt is added. Now the question is asked which of the following statement is or are related with the horizontal distribution of salinity of oceans? Now you know uh, the salinity changes with depth, it's not related with the horizontal distribution, it's related with the vertical distribution. Yes, sir, I will take the question number 43 again. Then the North Sea, is, in spite of its location in higher latitudes, records higher salinity due to more saline water brought by the North Atlantic Drift. Absolutely correct. The saline water is more, more salt is added. Then salinity at depth is very much fixed because there is no way that water is lost or salt is added. We know of filling and downwilling, the statement is wrong, but it certainly does not. Uh, is not related with the horizontal distribution of salinity of oceans. Okay. Second statement is correct and I think the answer with this is D. Question number 50, the answer is D. Yes, sir, I will take the question 43 again. 43 was I guess the same one. 43 was uh, the same that we had taken right now, major ocean currents, I guess. Yes. Yes, um, uh, what's, the, what's the point, uh, Satyam? We have already discussed about this. In the northern hemisphere, as we go towards north, or, if we, the, or in whatever direction we travel, we tend to, def to deflect towards the right, uh, towards clockwise. And in southern, we deflect towards anti-clockwise direction. So, you know, in north, any current from the low latitudes traveling towards higher latitudes will deflect towards right in the north and will deflect towards left in south. Well, I think the point is clear. So, okay. 
Another question. Yes, second statement, Satyam, I think you got. Yes, the correct answer. Correct answer is, uh, in this case, uh, the second question, uh, uh, option is written, due to coronavirus for the long current from lower latitude, tend to move towards left in the southern hemisphere. Uh, this direction is left. Yes, it goes towards left in the southern hemisphere and to the right in the northern hemisphere. But you know there is one uh, uh, one again this point that is it always the coronavirus point that affects the warm currents? You know so far so good. Both the op one, option one is uh, right and option two is wrong. So we go with answer 43 answer as A. Towards left. Okay, sorry, sorry. I uh, have 43. The answer is B. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I read it the other way. Then, any other doubt with this? Yes, one of you have a doubt. Um, please tell why. The answer is A. Uh, but Gaurav, you know, you just write, write it in a single statement because, uh, okay, Gaurav, send me the mail, we'll discuss it another time, you know, because what is happening here, you are sending your lines one by one and that is, a, a number of responses are coming and so I am unable to read your whole response. It, your one line is coming, then three, four more responses are coming, then another one. So, next question. Next question. 51. Yes, we wait. 51. We move on to question number 51. Now, consider the following statement. GDP can be higher than GNP. And NDP can be higher than GDP. Now, I don't think it's a question. Does that need any explanation? GDP can be higher than GNP. Yes, of course it's true. Yes, GDP can be higher. Uh, it, it is certainly do can be higher than GDP, GNP. You know, for the Western countries, there are a number of countries in which GDP is higher than GNP. So both NDP and GDP. So for GDP, 
maybe you know a number of uh, you know factors are there uh, maybe a number of factors are there which may not be related to that and uh, another uh, depreciation in the wear and tear no of course it's not that can never be negative it can be If a country, no, no, it's not only the GDP. Uh, the depreciation overall, the overall depreciation earlier it can be higher. Just do not, you know, uh, 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 Anand, your point I have taken it. But uh, just listen to the point and the answer is that depreciation can be replaced by the newer goods, the capital goods. For GDP, we don't always take that. GDP is only the gross domestic. And N is N of course includes the net domestic product. For capital goods, there are the new capital goods. No, no. Uh, in the net, the depreciation value is subtracted, and there is some appreciation value that new capital goods gets. You know, if you want to believe, you know, I have been in, uh, uh, I have been uh, for. Yes, for depreciation indicates how much of an asset value has been used, up, but there is more to it. So just do not worry, take the word Satyam, uh, I hope it should be, I am very clear with this, that NDP can be higher than GDP if the depreciation value is replaced by uh, the higher amount of capital stocks in the country and that is done many a times. Okay, uh, 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 I'll just, I'll send you the link also to many examples, many case studies to that, just do not worry. If you want, you can send the question at helpmeetkarelanza.com, uh, then you know, uh, but take the word NDP can be higher than GDP, 100% sure. I hope you are getting the point, you know, just try to remember this point, try your uh, searches on the web and uh, get that to me in case you get, uh, if you get uh, the point opposite to that. There are cases when NDP can be capital stocks produced as higher value and that is countering counter the um, depreciation, it could be. <coughs> yes, um, so next point. Next question. Twenty one. Yes, shall we be twenty one? Consider the following statement in regard to modern education in India. The Christian missionaries. Uh, played a significant role in spread of modern education. Absolutely correct. The Christian missionaries supported the religious education. Well, coming from there is a direct question from NCRT Shalini. Uh, the point is, the point is they had favored, uh, they had spread, helped, helped in uh, supported the spread of Western education, Western modern education. Okay, not the religious one, rather they were secular. So second is. Incorrect, what is correct? That is A option is correct. Yes, Satyam, question number 62. Is it again from economics? Let me check. For with NDP, GDP, just check your uh, data again. You will find the data. Go for good data finding. Okay, it's from uh, quality. Let's see. It will be a good fight. Why? And Australia GP is coming. Well, well, what is the score line that we will expect after the series? I think 4-0. 4-0 is less than anything. 4-0 is the only line that we need. Last year in Australia, we remember. हर मैच के बाद कैसे कैसे सांस निकालते थे वो लोग। ओके, now it's the time. Two two might happen. सत्य मारी हुई इंडियन और ऑस्ट्रेलियन। Two two, it will be four zero. Okay, we come to question number sixty two. Right now to the quality. Though though the president has no constitutional discretion, he can exercise some situational discretion. In which of the following situations can he exercise discretionary power? Appointment of Prime Minister in the Prime Minister's office by suddenly and there is no obvious successor. Well, uh, he can 
dismissal of the council of ministers when it cannot prove the confidence of Lok Sabha. Most certainly it is there. Dissolution of Lok Sabha if the council of ministers lost its majority. It can be proclamation of emergency. It's not a discretionary power. Proclamation of emergency is not a discretionary power. But I think, you know, the point is clear here. What is the doubt with you? The situation of this discretionary power is not with the president here. It's not proclamation of emergency. So one, two, and three. Now for such questions, try to see the options first. The second option is there in all the options. So there is the option first. Okay. So our question remains one only, one and three only, three only, three and four. Again, if we get three years wrong, we will certainly get the answer. But three is not wrong here, so we uh, we are left still with the options. Okay, so you know, uh, in this way we can actually go with the answers too. With three present in all, most of the answers, we will have to fight between one and four. One and four, if you solve the most probably answer will come. You know, in most of the questions, I have already discussed it before. Fact, read, but after that, you have to look at the options and see the reasoning. You know, in a horizontal thinking is fact, you know, a horizontal thinking is fact, you know, but then go for vertical solution also. Because all the facts are in the GSK exam is almost impossible. It's not easy to remember a lot of facts. And you know, one cannot know everything, as simple as that. One cannot know everything. Yes, Koshat, that is correct about depreciation. Depreciation, but new capital goods produced. You know, you are not following the point that I am telling. NDP is not just depreciation we subtract. Depreciation of capital goods. So, if new capital goods are added, which has more value than the depreciation, NDP can increase. Not only depreciation will occur, there will be some depreciation too. Yes, under 64. We move on to question number 64. Which of the following cannot issue a commercial paper? Which of the following cannot issue a commercial paper? What is a commercial paper? What is a commercial paper? Yes, come on. Uh, what is a commercial paper? Now, commercial paper, first, first understand what is commercial paper. You know, commercial papers are the, you know, it is a way of taking loan from the market in which the companies uh, issue commercial papers for short term loans. Generally, uh, one year to come period, for companies issue uh, um, these, 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 you know, can be a type of bond. Okay, so these things come out in the market commercial paper for short term loans. So generally for one year they come out. Now, which of the following will not be issuing a commercial paper? Just uh, now get the point. You know, means commercial paper, these are you know generally unsecured. These are generally unsecured. Yes, Akash, I hope you are getting the point. Now, commercial paper का पहले definition पढ़ो. Commercial paper वो चीज़ होते हैं जिसमें जिससे company market पे short term loan उठाती है generally one year से कम. Now, one question to all of you. Commercial paper की interest value ज़्यादा होगी या कम होगी? Commercial paper एक ही साल के अंदर तक के return values रखते हैं. They will be on the risky side or on the or comparatively, uh, they will not, you know, uh, these are unsecured, remember. Remember, they are unsecured uh, to that uh, loans. Yes, it will be risky. So, as it will be risky, its rate of return will be high or low. Rate of return will be high or low. Yes, correct, Gaurav. Very good, Chalini. Uh, so, it will be higher. So, higher interest rate generally on these commercial papers. And it will give towards the state. Yani, if you have a small company that commercial paper, तो हम क्या इन्वेस्ट करेंगे उस कमर्शियल पेपर में? बिकॉज़ ध्यान रखना वो अनसेक्योर्ड है, सेक्योर्ड नहीं होते, कोई कोलैटरल नहीं रखा होता है साथ में। 
So generally it will be very difficult for investors to invest in that. So generally companies or you know commercial banks don't uh, don't come out with this. They may give a um, uh, they may give a backup to their commercial banks, but they don't come out with commercial papers. Companies come out, financial institutions release it, and primary dealers will. Okay. I hope that it's clear. Question number forty one, Kavita. Yes, forty one. What is the topic? statement about mahatma gandhi Also, 
Well, to clear uh, such, I would uh, certainly you know try to avoid such questions which are purely based on factual part. Okay, question number sixty-seven. We move on to question number sixty-seven. Kavita, your question will be taken next. Consider the following statements regarding domestic electric circuits. In our homes, we receive supply of electric power usually is through a black-colored wire, commonly called the positive wire or the live wire. Oh, is the black-colored wire positive or live? So when we know a red a red wire or live wire is commonly, you know, live wire is a red wire. So one is certainly wrong. A different wire with red insulation is called neutral wire or negative wire. Another, you know, it's not given correct. So that is black. The black the uh, uh, wire with insulation is the black wire. So one is wrong. Two is wrong. The potential difference between the live wire and the neutral wire in India is to 20 volt. The well, alternating to 20 volt. Uh, the arc wire, which has insulation of green color, is usually connected to a metal plate deep in the arc well. A green color is arc wire certainly, and is usually connected to a metal plate deep inside deep in the arc well. Correct, you know. So option A, according to me, correct option should be C. Such in any doubt. The red is the live wire and the black is the neutral wire. I think this explanation must be given. Yes, Anant, if, uh, if Gandhi had paid in moderate methods, you know, Anant, you know, that is why the question is a bit subjective. If you want to take the answer as one as wrong or one as correct, but according to me, one is correct because Gandhi still believed in moderate methods. There were at times, you know, the Congress went on with the moderate policies, but. Um, uh, until, until, till, you know, even in 30s also to some extent Congress had some of the moderate policies, but uh, Gandhiji overall and in and all had, um, uh, you know, um, the policies other than moderate. So a bit subjective I would say, uh, you know, if you want you can take that point. First question here, if the closed question can answer generally you basically will not worry about it. Okay, another question. Yes, Shadani, question number 38. Which of the following part the power part uh, form the part of ECB, the external commercial powers? So you know a commercial bank loans uh, it can be, you know you got a primary dealer, you know, a first intermediary generally it is called. You know, take the take the uh, you know other to it. Um, Gaurav, we will, uh, we, I'll discuss it at the last. Okay, uh, so question number 38. Um, commercial bank loan certainly can be buyer and supplier's credit. If it is from any foreign resource, it will be security instrument such as floating rate notes and fixed rate bonds. So you know, all these can form the part of ECBs if they are from foreign resources. Can be a part of ECBs if they are from foreign resources. A floating rate notes and flo uh, fixed rate bonds, Kavita, it will be very difficult right now, but I will try to explain you the point. Uh, you know, uh, you want um, these bonds, you know, uh, suppose you want your money, suppose Facebook, Facebook for example, wants to collect a lot of money from the market. So, you know, what is, what the point is, they want, suppose they want to take a big loan from the, from a bank. A bank goes to them and says that, you know, it's, it's very difficult for the bank to provide them a lot of debt. Okay, what are loan banks suppose they give it But Facebook knows that in the market there are many players who can give them small, small small amount. You know, suppose there are 1 million customers in the market, each one of them can give $1,000 as the loan or an average of $5,000 as the loan. So in all together these 1 million customers can give $5 billion as the loan. Okay, now if you go to go, go for these in a single shot, it will be very very difficult or almost impossible in the market to actually collect $5 billion. But then companies go for these fixed rate bonds. Generally, they release the bonds 
and at a fixed rate which could be higher than the current rates at times they are higher than the current rates and they go in the market to take the loan so in all it is you know it is a debt instrument in which there is a, a fixed coupon rate that i would say now what is a coupon rate can you please listen very carefully that, that suppose i give you a bond of 100 rupees and a coupon rate of 10% and for four years suppose okay so what your point will be after one year you will be getting 10 rupees that is 10% coupon after second year you will again get 10 rupees after third year you will again get 10 rupees and at the time of maturity at the fourth year you will get the less amount that is 100 plus 10 rupees i hope you are getting the point so the bond rate is the fixed rate bond generally comes with a coupon rate and that coupon rate is what is paid every year to you and at the end means at the time of maturity you get the uh, your face value plus the final amount plus the coupon that you have invested so that is and similarly floating rate notes are there you know floating rate notes in in this it, it is not constant generally in the market these are very very common these days and it has certain risk involved with it Okay, I hope your point is clear. Now this is the uh, fixed coupon rate, and in a floating coupon, it will be variable coupon. In first year it may be five, second year it may be ten, third year it may be twelve. Generally, इसका difference नहीं होता है, लेकिन कुछ कुछ difference होता है, nine, ten, eleven हो सकता है. Okay, and then in the final year there is further another run with your face value plus a different value. So in that way, after शुरू में सौ रुपए दिए थे and you finally got 140 rupees after four years with this fixed rate bonds. Okay, another question. Yes, another question number. Yes, sir. Same question number one. One and two. Okay. Consider the following: Which of the uh, reduction in land revenue subsidy to food grain traders creation of employment in affected areas? Which of the following measures were introduced by British Indian government to prevent the bombardment of farmers? Now, subsidy was uh, never given. Reduction in land revenue at times, creation of employment in affected areas at times. So, one in three. You know, which is more? You know, directly from NCRT. This is a direct question from NCRT. creation of employment in affected areas at times they you know they took some uh, measures to uh, increase the employment it's you know ncrt given I, you know i just uh, don't have the resource file i was having the resource file just um, Okay. Now, if, uh, from NCRT, there it's given in the NCRT book class ninth. Okay. Another question. Question number two. Recently, Pranam Mukherjee, President of India, and both President Rule in Jharkhand. This is the following statement from the Government to President Rule. If proclamation is approved by both the houses of parliament, it will not be open to courts to consider whether it passed to a so existed as to warrant exercise of power. No, it will be open open to the courts. I either approved by one or both. So it's certainly wrong. President rule in the state is imposed upon the satisfaction. So if one is wrong, we can see there is only two options left. Okay, uh, we have option B and option C left. One and D we can strike out. So two is certainly correct. We we'll, we should go for three and four. The the courts have the power if the proclamation is struck down as unconstitutional to order the revival or dissolve state assembly and restoration of the dismissed state government. Of course, the yes, courts have the power. The state assembly and a, 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 of course uh, then the state assembly can be dissolved 
even before both houses of parliament have approved the proclamation made by president under three fifty six. State assembly can be dissolved. No, of course it's ca it cannot be dissolved. He, uh, It cannot be. So you know, two and three is left. Two and three is the answer. C option. Yes, sir. Is that thirty-four? We have already taken thirty-four. We have already taken question number thirty-four. No, no. Sorry, we haven't taken. Let's see. An electric current always produces a magnetic field, and this effect of magnetism is used in medicine. Consider the following statements in this regard. Even weak ion currents that travel along the nerve cells in our body produce a very strong. Does that mean that? No, no, it does not produce a strong magnetic field. It does not produces a strong magnetic field. Weak ion currents in our body. Then the two main organs in the human body where the magnetic field produces is significant are heart and brain. Yes. The magnetic field inside the body forms the basis of obtaining the images of different body parts, and it is done by magnetic uh, uh, resonance imaging. Yes, you know, uh, but you know that is a very strong magnetic field is a bit subjective. Um, I would say, it's, uh, you know, what I how would I say that it's very strong or just enough? So in, our body actually produces magnetic uh, field. You know, that is why you know MRIs are done. Okay. Yes, Gaurav, that's the point. Just enough to measure MRI, so it's not very strong. I would not say that it's actually on the weaker side. <coughs> Then next question. In twenty minutes, we did. In twenty minutes, we had enough discussions. Okay. The next question. Question number eight. Consider the following statement in regard to the indigenous industries between two world wars. Again, go to Bipin Chandra. Question is from Bipin Chandra. Okay, they suffered from global recession. No, you know, uh, they suffered, but you know, growth was recorded during this time. You know, uh, that is what the data says that uh, there was growth to some extent. Few industries like the productive by British India rule certainly they were. They recorded a rapid decline in their production. They say no, no, uh, it, it it did not. Industries had actually expanded, and you know uh, it was exported. Indian goods were exported to many British colonies. So you know to an extent they were not affected much by global recession. It is the option. The next question, Kavita. Uh, uh, anyone? Overall, I would say they repeat that. Thirty K rounds should be done. Okay. Then minus your some of the negative marks, that is ten marks. You should get a total of around fifty marks. Question. Abhi factual data hai. Right now. When we are doing during the test series, from point of view, there are a number of factual questions. Okay, there are you know quite a few factual questions. And that is why at times you know it will be very difficult to answer all of them. Yes, next out question number twelve. Which of the following statement is or are correct according to the uh, in regards to? Net present value. The the net present value is the amount the user agencies have to deposit as per the 2002 order of the Supreme Court for diversion of forest and to not not forest usage. 
the NPV intrinsic cost, you know, for NPV, uh, you'll have to read some of the lines, you know. I'll just give a link to you. If you want, you can read that. You know, take it from Investopedia and also uh, from accounting, um, from the accounting knowledge, I would just tell you. Railways, it can be in airways, it can be in roadways. 
Now, in the, generally it is used in the ship ways because it, it is very very common in the shipping industry that cabotage is there and in this what you know, the ships travel very close to the coastal waters, very close to the coast and that is why there are many cabotage laws. Now recently, actually the government of India has recently uh, loosened, you know, has given many perks has and, and has uh, and untightened uh, 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 the screws on the, uh, in order to increase the movement. Now, in order to reduce illegal movement, rather it has, it wants more cabotage and that is why it has uh, loosened the laws. Okay. I hope you got the idea. So uh, now in India, cabotage will be very very common. If you want to send goods, you can send it to the foreign market. Hopefully it is like that. Yeah, you know, that is why. Yeah, Gaurav, uh, the one is correct because earlier, before this law, only Indian track vessels were able to handle the coastal cargo. कोस्टल टाइगर कहाँ कोई कर पाएगा मुंबई से डे मुंबई से सपोज के एंडर प्लान है तो दैट वाज यू यू विल हैव टू यूज एन इंडियन पेस्टल यू कैन नॉट इट्स वेरी डेट वाज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू टू सेंड योर गुड्स थ्रू अ फॉर्टेन बेस्ड शिप नाउ इट विल बी इजी एट कैबोटाज वर्क हैज बीन रिलैक्स Yes, before this law, yes, you know, uh, before this law, no, uh, before this law, it was actually very difficult. And uh, you know, now as the laws have been re relaxed, it will be very comparatively easier. You know, I get the point, Gaurav, that is very subjective, but I hope you got the idea. You know, uh, with this question, it's not all the thing, but. Uh, Here, another question. Just come with the question number 82. Does the following statement regarding the unlawful activities prevention amendment was recently passed by Parliament? Again, the static question, you know, directly should be taken. Okay. 
they say aromatic hydrocarbon but for you just remember that it is made from some artificial resources sunset yellow is a sulfuretted version of sudan one which is a possible carcinogen so that is the biggest reason it may cause cancer okay what is the question is priti sabarwal says question number 10 i could see in question answers column okay question number 10 which of the following statement associated with less developed countries not a major no uh, just read it you know try to read these questions such questions i would expect ki padhne ke baad bhi answer kiye ja sakte hain the eight tech pyramid of these countries is a triangular shaped pyramid with a white base and these countries have larger population and lower age group to high birth rates absolutely true is tarah ka hota hai kuch और अगर इस तरह का क्या थोड़ा और फ्लैट होता है वाई बिकॉज इन द यू नो इन द स्मॉलर एरिया इन द यंगर एरिया मोर पीपल आर देयर एंड देयर ओवरऑल एक्सपेक्टेंसी लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी इज लो एंड देयर फोर पीपल फ्रॉम द अपर एज ब्रैकेट आर इन अ वे एक्सेंट सो फर्स्ट वन इज एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट इकोनॉमी स्टिल इन द प्रिमिटिव स्टेज इन प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ पीपल एंगेज इन प्राइमरी एक्टिविटीज वुड बी हाई एज इट इन नॉट एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज वेरी वेरी ट्रू it they have a first level of even they have the first level of uh, population growth the population stage stage demography so uh, they have high growth rate high birth rate and they most of the people follow the uh, first primary activities or the you know the older activities absolutely correct both are correct you know these questions can be done from general knowledge they are less of geography more of the general knowledge thoda sa acha sa dimag lagaiye ho sakta hai clear Yes. Now the question. Yes, fine. Okay, all of you. Thank you very much. If you have any other doubt, you can mail at health at dharmaonchar dot com to the GST. Help me. Help me. No, or you know they have natural resources. It is the primary activity that is the focus. It is the primary activity. No, they have you know as a result of that many things. Rather, they have the question is about the primary activity is the focus that is there. So even if they don't have natural resources, they will go for agriculture in some area. If agriculture like the main thing is there, means it is of course there must be something. Else. They go for point is they don't go for industrial activities. they don't go for services activities they are primarily associated with the natural resources which are pani ke form mein ho chahe land ke form mein ho chahe coal chahe iron ore in any form it is yes question number 53 by kavita yes kavita question number 53 can you the following statement regarding national floor level minimum wage okay seedhe yahan se yaad kar lo teen statement i would say rather Of course, correct that a third third option go. Uh, it is a uniform wage structure and to reduce disparity in minimum wages across the country. Correct. It is revised from time to time, primarily taking into account the increase in CPI. Yes. Uh, since it is a statutory measure, it is not a statutory measure. It's a avadhani hai. It's a non-statutory measure. The state governments are persuaded to fix minimum wages in such a way that in none of the scheduled employments the minimum wage is less than that less than eight. Well, uh, it is a non-statutory measure, and the rest part is correct. I would say three more things. One thing is correct, Lohanar. Just correct that statutory part and uh, by heart question.
is fine. Okay, fine. Thank you all. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, again, help me at therealauncher.com. Always, CL is ready to help you. And uh, send your doubts and uh, help me at therealauncher.com. Okay, and this recording will be uh, uploaded in 2-3 days time. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you.